This week we're going to talk about two different, if somewhat related, topics. The first is the invisible web, the other is gray literature. Both require us to think a little differently about a typical Google search. I'm sure you're thinking, please don't make us learn to search anything else. We can't take any more. I know, I truly sympathize, but this is it. No more searching after this week. Well, at least for this class. One reason to look outside of Google, or to at least change how you search in Google, is that it doesn't capture everything that's out there. Shocking, I know. Or, even if Google does find a perfect website, it may be 15 pages into your search results, and you're never going to get that far. One reason Google may not find sources is because the information is password protected, like our databases, for example. The little Google spiders, the code that goes out and pulls information off of websites, can't get in there, so the content is not captured. Even if information is freely available, the data still might not be pulled or it's not deemed relevant. The stuff that is not indexed by Google or other traditional search engines is known as the invisible, deep, or hidden web. Most of this content is behind passwords or paywalls like databases, your email, banking information. Many people use an iceberg to demonstrate what Google can find and what it can't get to. Some sources state that Google indexes less than 20% of the whole web and that this deep web is more than 500 times bigger than what Google can find. I have yet to see actual evidence to back up those claims, so take those stats with a grain of salt. What is true is that Google can't search everything. In some cases, this doesn't matter, as you'll still find good stuff. And as long as you're associated with a university, you can get to all those great library databases which make a really big chunk of this deep web. I just want you to know that you're only seeing a small portion of what's out there when you run a Google search. Related, but not exactly the same, is the concept of gray literature. This is information that's been created, but has not gone through the traditional publishing process. That means you won't find it in most library databases or catalogs. You can actually find a lot of this through Google. It includes things like company reports, government sources, conference proceedings, guidelines, dissertations, and more. This can be highly useful stuff, as much of it's created by researchers, scientists, and other experts in their field. Just be aware that most of this gray literature has not been peer-reviewed or vetted as thoroughly as information that's been published. If gray literature isn't coming from traditional publishers, why should we even bother? Well, gray literature can help provide a more complete view of the research. This is especially important in the health sciences where publication bias is a huge issue. This type of bias results when articles have a positive outcome or that have something interesting happen are much more likely to get published than articles where the research shows a negative or even no effect. There's also the issue of publication lag. It can take months and months, if not years, for an article to go from initial research to publication. A lot of the gray literature is much more timely. So, how do you search for information that's hard to find? Instead of casting a wide net, we need to be spear fishing. Get specific, not just with your search terms, but where you're searching. You can still use Google, but use the advanced features and limit to a .edu, .gov, or .org website. Also, think about what you want to find and what groups or agencies might publish that sort of information. You might not always know this off the top of your head. You can Google something like American Indian Health Organization or Agency if that's the population you're interested in researching. This will help you find some of the major players that are likely to be producing reports and other information that could be helpful for your research. Let's see some gray literature searching in action. So let's say you want to find more about methods to prevent chronic disease in American Indian populations. You maybe already have a couple of articles, a book, and some websites that look okay, but you want to dig a little deeper. What are your options? The first option is to use Google Advanced Search and limit to .gov. So we're going to do that. Remember you can find the Google Advanced Search by going to Google's main page and then going to Settings and clicking on Advanced Search. 
So I'm going to enter in my search terms in the appropriate boxes. I'm putting chronic disease in the all the words. I'm putting American Indian in the exact word or phrase. And in the any of these words, remember these are the ones that get ORed. This is where I'm putting keywords like report, study, statistics, white paper. These are sort of keywords that really help you get at some of that gray literature information. All right, now you can go down to the site or domain, and that's where you can enter in your .org, .gov, .edu. For now, I'm just going to limit to the .gov because I want to see what sort of government information is out there. And then we're just going to search. Okay, that found a good amount of information, not too much. 43,000 results in a Google search is actually pretty good. And some of these look good. Some of these are a little too specific. Chronic disease in North Dakota might be more than we want. There's some information from the CDC. And here is a PDF document. I was going to bring this one up. Okay, prevalence of chronic disease among American Indian and Alaska Native elders. This is a really good looking report. A little dated. But this is the sort of thing we're talking about when we are searching for gray literature. This is the kind of stuff that's not going to be published in traditional sources, but still has really good content. You can get even more specific than this by going back to our search in Google Advanced, and you can limit to the file type. Let's say we just want PDFs. A lot of gray literature is published as a PDF, so this can be a great way to narrow your search. Just be forewarned that this can be a little limiting, and you might miss some good stuff. So let's go ahead and search it with PDFs. Yeah, that knocked it down to half of what we had found before. Again, we have some pretty specific stuff. And here's a diabetes statistics report from the CDC. Again, this is good data, really good information from a reliable source. And sometimes this is the only way you can find this information. OK, a second way to locate gray literature is to go directly to a site that focuses on your population. In this case, we might be looking at the Indian Health Service. You might not always know the particular organization or group that is focused on your topic. Just do a little Google searching, maybe go to Wikipedia and see what they list. And then go to that individual site and search there. More specific is better. We can try chronic disease, but it might be better to focus on one chronic disease. So let's just search on type 2 diabetes. Okay, we have got some PDF documents here. Unfortunately, a lot of these look like they're not really what you would call gray literature. Like this, we'll bring this one up here. This looks like it's more patient information, not more of a report. The problem with this type of search is that a lot of sites have lousy internal search engines. Happily, you can use the Google Advanced Search to search just one website. And this is going to be our third method for finding gray literature. So let's go back to our friend, Google Advanced Search, and type in exactly what you're looking for. Put in your keywords, kind of like you did before. Let's go to the particular website. And then let's just do the search and see what we find. And again, we find some stuff, like this actually looks good, Division of Diabetes Treatment and Prevention. A whole page just for that good start, but again, we're looking more for reports. So let's try putting in some of the report information and see what we find. Uh, this is looking much better. So here's some information on type 2 diabetes in youth. All right, there's a PDF, the third one down. It's talking about uh, Indian Health Diabetes best, best Practice. Let's pull that up. All right, this looks pretty good. Not the most up to date, but it's pretty good. And it is a 51 or 57 page document which has got a lot of really good information. And just like the initial Google Advanced Search that we did, you can make this as specific as you want, even within just looking at one website. So let's say we only want information that talks about type 2 diabetes, has any of these words, is it the Indian Health Service website, and also is a PDF. We're starting to get really specific. All right, that is looking pretty good. As you can see from this search, we actually did find some really good information here that won't be found in most library databases. Again, this gray literature is information that's not published in traditional sources like books and journals. The strategies we just did here are really handy if your topic's cutting edge or at least new enough not to have a lot of traditional research published. With healthcare topics, you can go to a source like clinicaltrials.gov. This site includes information on research studies that are just starting, are in progress, or have been completed. 
The information can be hit and miss, and sometimes it's kind of sparse, but it can get you started. Or you can take your health topic and go through the Google Advanced Search and limit to a .gov or a .edu site. Here are the three techniques for finding gray literature that we just covered. First, use Google Advanced. Second, you can go to a specific website and use their search engine to search, or you can use Google to search a website. Every search could benefit from looking beyond the library's resources. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. So, don't forget these strategies for your future research topics. There's a lot more to gray literature and the invisible web, and I encourage you to learn more if you're interested. But I think these few tips I showed you here are enough to at least get you started.